and welcome back in the last video you saw us take off the uh, front timing cover and uh, expose uh, our innards there and uh, uh, also notice that it just has the the older timing guide on it so as we commented we'll get a new timing setup to include tensioner guide chain and of course we'll upgrade this to a Hellcat oil pump again provided that we find out that the bottom ends okay here so uh, one thing I didn't show you we did this during the week in preparation for taking the heads off we went ahead and soaked the um, collector bolts on both sides with just some penetrant and you can see thankfully they were not rusted in place we were able to soak them down a little bit and uh, get them to break free and we used the same method that we did in our 6.2 build and if you go back and watch the video on that one you can catch how we did it it just takes a multitude of uh, various adapters and elbows and some ball sockets to get the right angle on it now this one wasn't too bad on the passenger side uh, it's about as fun as the 6.4 was with, you know, the, again, you're going to need some swivels in order to get the angle to get those, uh, those bolts out. Now, as you can see here with the path, with the fender liner removed, you do have easier access, uh, to that hardware, which can definitely be helpful once you get those bro uh, bolts broken loose to spin them out the rest way by hand or, or even to get them restarted when you're getting ready to reinstall everything. But the driver's side one, uh, at least on this 5.7, was uh, a fair bit interesting. And uh, what you're going to see, I'll see if I can show this to you, is you may be able to see that it's kind of deep down in there where that collector is at. Let me touch the view screen here to see if I can get you a shot of it. You can kind of see where the oxygen sensor is, one of them is almost right in line with where you need to take that bolt out so i wasn't able to get half inch hardware on the driver's side top bolt for that flange i had to drop down to a 3 8 inch 14 millimeter socket and some extensions in order to get enough clearance around that oxygen sensor to break that bolt loose now interesting enough the bottom one is really really easy to get to it's right there, right in front, nothing obstructing you. Uh, but uh, we want to break the top one loose, and it was actually hand loose. Uh, I could reach up there and spin it free with just my fingers. So not sure if it worked itself loose over time, or if it's just uh, further evidence that somebody else has been in here kind of playing around. Also to show this to you, just like we did with our other... Our other series of videos this one's no different you can see we've got our jack stands in here just supporting our exhaust system so it doesn't drop down and you know hang by our oxygen sensor wires but I wanted to show that to you you can see your collector bolts at that point there and there so the bottom one on the passenger side is pretty easy to get to it's pretty low right there in the face the top one you kind of have to go up and around the converter on this side again with some swivel extensions uh, and some pretty long extensions and what I had to do was just like on the 6.4 if you watch that video is have some extensions come out to about here drop it down with a swivel and then finally put an impact on it uh, to, to get enough perch on it to break that bolt loose the driver's side one let me get myself scooted that direction. <laughs> Let's see here. I'll show it to you. There we go. You can see that hardware there. You can see that bottom one's easy to get to, but that top one, you can see those oxygen sensors there. It's a bit more difficult so you kind of that's where I had to drop down to a 3 8 to get enough clearance to get the socket to fit over the bolt and not contact the oxygen sensor now ultimately you could take the oxygen sensor off the top it is the pre-cat oxygen sensor the first one 
you could ultimately try and attempt to take that oxygen sensor out to get you the clearance to get that bolt out or you can just drop to some 3 8 hardware because I really didn't want to monkey with taking an oxygen sensor out because you know you always run that risk that uh, you got to heat them and beat them and you don't quite know you know what kind of fight you're in for in order to get that stuff to break loose so like I said but the good thing is, is the collector's out we're just supporting it down here with the jack with a couple jack stands a little bit of a gap in that jack stand but the exhaust drops down it'll catch it right now it's just being supported by this one and again that's just to keep the exhaust from dropping down and having it hang by the oxygen sensor wiring now what we may end up doing uh, when we go to drop this transmission pan eventually to do the fluid change we may just disconnect our oxygen sensors and kind of let the exhaust drop down uh, completely and uh, and go from there because I, I noticed that the, the way they had done this aftermarket exhaust you notice there's the union here with just a clamp if we can get that union to separate it's just right above this transmission cross member and if we have those heads out and those collectors aren't getting in our way then we should be able to disconnect our oxygen sensors hopefully break this union loose and then just push everything forward get it to clear this uh, transmission cross member and we may be able to drop uh, the entire Y pipe out of here and just kind of get it out of our way or at least down and away far enough to get our transmission pan dropped so we can change our filters but that'll be a, a future project so with that being said what we're going to do is we're going to continue working on getting the valve covers back off we're going to get the rocker shafts off and then obviously the next step will be breaking the head bolts loose and then pulling the cylinder heads and seeing what kind of carnage is waiting for us on the other side and i am going to now attempt to get myself out from underneath this thing and yes this is the joys of working in your driveway i don't know what you're gonna say but didn't we see a lift in the previous videos yes you did but with this thing being doa and not able to drive under its own power and me not really wanting to pull the toy out of the garage for an extended period of time that's where we're working on it out here but no harm we got our canopy up to block us from the sun uh you may have noticed that a little bit of bandage on my hand and this is my fault my doing uh, I will caution to say that uh, when dealing with an electric half-inch impact, the break, break loose your collector bolts and dealing with a multitude of swivels and ball sockets to get the angle on those bolts we needed to get the impact on there. Uh, when your hand is near one of the swivel sockets and it decides to fly apart, and by that I mean the pin that keeps the swivel together slid out, allowed the joint to fall apart but the pin was still on the impact side of the gun and the impact side of the gun still running at uh, full rpms because it was in the process of breaking one of the uh, collector bolts loose so you can imagine about a uh, you know half inch piece of metal sticking at the end of a swivel socket rotating a pretty high thing of speed with an electric torque wrench that could do about 200 plus foot pounds when that breaks free and your hand is there, you know, your hand's no match It's uh, uh, for 200 plus foot pounds. Let's just put it that way. So I ended up cutting two pretty good sized grooves on the palm of my hand. Needless to say, that was fun. So important safety tip for you. And again, just be mindful of what you're working on. Uh, the What we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and try to get more of the hardware out and around from around this motor in order to get these cylinder heads out of here. Uh, I'm gonna let, since they are broken from the exhaust, you can take these cylinder heads out of here with the exhaust uh, still attached to the head. So we're going to, again, attempt to do that. Makes them a bit cumbersome and a bit more heavy, but the passenger side one, you've got a lot more room to work with than you do on the driver's side, so it, it'll be a fun pain in the rear, just like it was on the 6.4. This lower air box, when you get the top done, this literally just picks up and slides out of place. 
Uh, you can see it just supports itself on two pins here. So we'll pick this up and get this out of here to give us some more room. And uh, we're going to take loose all of the connectors off our PCM. So that way we can just take this harness and kind of roll it forward and push it out of the way. Uh, and get it out of here so that way we're not fighting trying to get around this harness when pulling this head out. And a little tip for you. Um, Chrysler likes their red locks. If you run into an issue where you can't get these red locks to come undone, just spray them down with a little bit of WD-40. WD-40 is not going to hurt your electrical connectors. WD-40 is made to displace water anyway. Uh, and then once you hit these with a little, little bit of WD-40, it'll help flush the debris out of them. And a little pocket screwdriver and you can kind of, then you should be able to pop these red lock tabs back pretty easy. On this particular style of PCM, because it's an older one, it's, it's a four connector one instead of the newer ones, which are two connector. But you'll notice these connectors are color coded. You'll notice that one is green and then there's a green bar above it. So it's pretty easy to get these connectors back in the, the right spots and, you know, where they go. Uh, let's see. So other than that, that's it. We're going to work on getting these valve covers out of here. Like I said, then we'll get the rocker shafts pulled and then we'll start breaking some head bolts loose and going from there. And when we get to that point, I'll bring it back. Thank you much. Bye. And welcome back. So you can see at this point we've got our rocker shafts off both our intake and exhaust. Uh, I'll show you those here in a bit later, but they, they still looked in really, really good condition. I didn't see any excess wear spots, you know, so on and so forth on them, at least not on this passenger side. But we've also got our head bolts out and crack loose. And I yes, and I, I did break the torque on them per the, the uh, sequence as the manual suggests. And you can probably hear that little bit of a antifreeze drip that's going on right now. I've got to push our pan back here a little bit. And then I'll see if I can crack this cylinder head loose up off the dowel pins. Actually, nope, I need to remove the uh, top 10 millimeter bolts next. And then we'll crack it loose. And uh, generally what I like to do, just allow it to drain. As you can see there, we've got our drip pan in. I'll push the drip pan a bit more in, but you can see there's like a little gap between the cylinder cylinder head and the block. Usually I'll put just a small pry bar in there and kind of pry up on it and get it to break its seal and just allow it to finish draining this coolant and then we'll, we'll pull the head off at that point. Uh, but with that being said, let me get those 10 millimeters. Um, I believe those are 10 millimeters, if I remember correctly. If not, I'll come back and correct it. I'm going to get those top bolts out, and then I'll, I'll bring you back. And welcome back. So just to confirm the top of the cylinder head bolts, these going across the top, these five are 10 millimeter. Be mindful that there is a 13 millimeter on the passenger side back of this 5.7 cylinder head. There's an eyelet you can see there that is a 13 millimeter bolt and it is a grounding strap. You can see it comes over to the driver's side head, grounds, grounds the passenger side head, and then comes over and clips right there. Hopefully you can see that right up there against the body panel. Uh, this is going to need some repair work, possibly a replacement, because the grounding strap that goes from the passenger side head to that wall there, or that connection point on the firewall, is about half chewed through at this point. So we're definitely gonna to wanna to make sure that we beef our grounds to our engine block back up because you know bad grounds cause really weird electrical problems to take place. So what I'm gonna do is, can you give me that small um, uh, pry bar? Yep, that one right there, perfect. And let's get our pan pushed in more. You guys are going to have to forgive the camera work on this. Just push it towards, no, 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 push it towards the back. Back? Yep, push it back a little bit more, a little bit more. Whoa, whoa, whoa right there. Yeah, right there. That should do it. So what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to show you what I was talking about where I'm just going to see if I can grab the lip right here and pick up ever so gently on this cylinder head. And there it goes. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of keep this up a little bit and just let the rest of that coolant drain. 
And once it done, once it is done, I should say, we'll we'll get this cylinder head off of here. And when we get this thing pulled off, I'll bring you back. Talk to you a bit. Bye. Okay, welcome back. Uh, spared you the repetitive boring stuff and went ahead and removed the rocker arms off the intake and exhaust. Got the push rods out, head bolts are out, and the uh, the the 10 millimeter bolts the five on the top are out uh, i still have to get that other ground rod that we our grounding screw that we took off the passenger head because remember it's got a grounding piece of ground wire that goes bolts between each head and then bolts to the frame so we need to get that out that'll be another 13 millimeter in the back of the head and that looks like that's the only other attachment point we're going to go ahead and crack this head loose and what it looks like we can do and you can just kind of see it dripping there a little bit is we still have the exhaust manifold on here so i can get a little pry bar in between the block and the bottom of the exhaust manifold and we should be able to pry up and there we go there we go now we're draining okay so hopefully you can hear that we're going to go ahead and let this head completely drain and then I'm going to take that ground strap off and then we'll get this head off and then we'll kind of review and look for any carnage. I'll bring you back in a bit. Bye. And welcome back. So we got the driver's side cylinder head off and we'll, we'll show you all that carnage in due time. We're in the process of trying to get the oil pump off of here. So we can go ahead and get the cam and everything pulled out and confirm kind of what the lifters are telling us. In reference that uh, we're gonna more than likely need a cam but uh, again I don't want to spoil that we'll get to that in a bit uh, now when we did the the black truck we did the 6-4 we had enough clearance that with, with some clever manipulation we could reach in on the driver's side of the oil pan and undo a bolt and unbolt the oil pickup tube and be able to actually remove the entire oil pan and put it in but it doesn't look like we're going to have the clearance to do the same thing on this one without having to raise the motor up i don't really want to raise the motor up i just want to get the oil pump off uh, I think we can do that without having to drop the oil pan per se. Uh, now, uh, Scott made a comment in my last video and said, look forward to the fun. And I know exactly what he's talking about because I've seen him go through this with his. And uh, he thought maybe I had kind of a creative way of doing this. Uh, and I don't. <laughs> what I'm going to do is kind of do what Scott did and use one of his techniques and just loosen up enough of the oil pan bolts to give us enough flex and enough give that we can get the nut off the bottom of the uh, pickup tube and that will allow us to get the pump out and when i bring you up to the top i'll show you what i mean in a car version of the hemi it's much easier because the oil uh pickup tube is only bolted to the pump so you can actually unbolt the pump and turn the pump sideways and get enough leverage out of it to get to the nut that holds the pickup tube and a truck, however, and you're seeing the oil pan here, obviously, the bottom of the pickup tube is somewhere right about here. And the lower depth and the deeper part of the oil pan. The pickup tube itself is also bolted maybe about midway underneath uh, to the bottom of the block, uh, which is why it, typically in order to get to that pickup tube and remove it, you would have to drop the oil pan uh, but for now, yeah, like I said, because of this uh, axle here, this transfer case and this axle, and this steering here, power steering box here, I don't think we've got the drop necessary like we did last time to be able to get the pan out. Last time we could drop the pan, reach in from the driver's side, like I was saying with a ratchet, be able to get perch on that bolt and undo the mounting bolt and drop the pickup tube into the pan. And then once we have the pickup tube into the pan, then we could just pull the whole pan out. And I really think that we're gonna hit that transfer case and that uh, 
drive axles going to the front. But in any case, what I wanted to show you, just like on the 6.4, a lot of this is very similar. You've got your transmission cooling lines, which go onto a bracket, which press onto the stud. And the stud is actually one of the oil pan bolts. So you can kind of see that piece there. What you can do is you can wedge a screwdriver, flat tip screwdriver into the beginning of that clip and pop that clip open. And that'll allow you to drop your kind of your transmission lines out of the way. You could then get this special little mount off and then be able to get to the bolt that's underneath the opposite side you know, they're doing the same thing you should be able to see that there uh, let's see uh, it's just not a good way to see this yeah, there it is right there. You can see right up there at the tip of the light, the other side of the oil pan bolt has a little press on clip that's got a wiring harness on it. So that's gonna have to be dropped. So, so far I've removed the next series of bolts over on the other side. I'm gonna drop the next bolt behind it and see if I get enough slack out of the pan. Now we may just have to undo all the oil pan bolts and just let it drop and sit there in order to get that uh, the bolt off that pump. We shall see. So let me tackle this a bit, kind of see what we're looking at. If uh, I'll remove a few more bolts off this oil pan, but if we don't have the flex we need, then I'll go ahead and drain the oil pan at that point and just finish dropping it and let it set on top of this axle. And that should give us the clearance we need to get the oil pump out. If it looks like we can drop it and get to that mounting bolt for that pickup tube and get that dropped and pull the entire pan out, then we'll go ahead and do that because there's plenty of clearance behind the transmission to get that oil pan to drop. So if we can do to this like we did the six, uh, the bigger truck with the 6.4, I'll bring you back and show you that. But for now, I'm going to work on getting these oil pan bolts out, and then I'll bring you back. Thank you much. And welcome back. So, um, the last uh, video you saw, we got the driver's side cylinder head off. Uh, we've been working on getting the oil pan loose enough to get that oil pump off. And uh, we eventually did have to do uh, use the Scott Rods maneuver and drop the oil pan uh, all together now unfortunately un unlike the 6.4 there isn't enough uh clearance between the bottom of the oil pan and the differential where they have it sitting in this truck to be able to do like we did on the other one and just drop it completely reach in from the passenger side undo the bolt for the oil pickup and drop the pan all together but you get enough room there you can see me pushing it down there that exposes the head of that bolt and you don't have enough clearance between the bolt and the pickup tube to get like the back end of a, a ratcheting wrench in there so i just had to use the front end of the wrench being careful not to strip the bolt to get that bolt out now it's a pretty lengthy bolt so you kind of have to you'll know, be in there with kind of two fingers doing this uh, unscrewing that bolt once you get it down far enough uh, if you drop it in the pan like I did, unfortunately, thankfully, it didn't roll all the way back of the pan. We were able to fish it out with a magnet. But, um, I don't know. I, I may end up getting the cherry picker out of here and picking this engine up uh, at least enough to get that oil pan out in its entirety. I don't know yet. Uh, we haven't spun the engine over by hand to see if any of that roughness we were feeling when we were trying to put the push rods back in has gone away. Uh, I think it was related to those uh, lifters and those push rods and I'll explain why. But we did get that bolt out. As you can see there, we're gonna unbolt the oil pump next uh, and start getting all this timing gear off of here. And uh, one thing I will say is that uh, on this oil pan, just like the 6.4, there's a couple of bolts on there that are actually studs because they're being used to hold wiring harnesses and the transmission cooling line bracket in place. And on the sides of the pan, what I did was just take a silver Sharpie and just write SS for short stud or SL for long stud. On the driver's side, there's two short studs that hold the wiring harness in place. On the passenger side, there's one slightly longer stud 
that holds the bracket that holds the transmission lines in place so just a little stuff like that make sure that you mark it or you take a picture of it so you remember that you get the stuff back in the right spots but with that uh, bolt out of there uh, we're going to continue forward get this oil pump out of her off here uh, and then we'll bring you back thank you much and welcome back so you can see we got our oil pump off uh, getting the pickup tube off isn't too bad once you have the oil pump unbolted you can push down on this and at least on this one it, it slid out of the pump pretty easily now with that being said that o-ring anytime you disable this and or take this out and put this back in uh, that o-ring needs to be replaced but you can see that we also have the guy the old guy the old tensioner timing chain all removed the phaser removed and i'm getting ready to try to pull the cam out at this point so we can inspect it as well as replace it you'll understand why here in a short I went ahead and took the thrust plate off, off for that cam. It is a... Yes, and you can see the aftermath of parts that's taking place for the day. This is a T30 uh, Torx bit uh, that, holds that, that holds that plate in. There's four of them. Just be careful when you're, when you're uh, taking these loose. You don't want to strip those guys out by any stretch of the imagination uh so we took the thrust plate off now i'm going to show you what i like to do to help kind of grab a hold of this cam a lot of people just put the cam bolt in and you can do that and that works fine there's like specialty tools you can buy that'll you know kind of give you a handle to hold on to but we did this on the on the black one i'm going to do the same thing here i'm just going to put the phaser back on and hand tighten the bolt and that way I could use the phaser as a big grabbing surface to help uh, get that cam out of there. Uh, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and work on getting this uh, cam out and then I'll bring you back. Thank you much. Okay, and welcome back. And now the moment that you've all been waiting for, the carnage. I alluded to some of this earlier in the video, but I wanted to make sure that we got everything out okay before I gave final verdict on what we can see. So you can see that we got our cam out and you can see that we have our lifters out. Now, let's start with the cam. Check out this. Look at that cam lobe, or I should say, what's left of that cam lobe. Pretty, unfortunately, pretty common problem uh, with Chrysler's especially Chrysler's of this vintage so we've got a completely destroyed cam lobe here and if we go on through you can see this one also started to uh, eat into itself I should say lifter did and if we look at this cam and continue to rotate it we got some chips out of that lobe you can see some wear spots in this lobe here also some pitting where that is starting to go and you can see again that's more shots of that lobe there starting to wipe itself out and there's some more pitting on this cam lobe so the deal is obviously this was having some serious problems, especially with that lobe being pretty much destroyed and the pitting starting on the other ones. So lifter failure on at least this one and lifters starting to go on several other ones. Now, with that being said, um, it's always kind of a gamble when you rebuild the front end of something that has suffered uh, lifter failure like this because that metal that it ground off that cam had to go somewhere now the hope is is that the oil filter fit, picked it up and screened it out like it was supposed to as well as the screen on the bottom of the pickup tube now with that being said I'm really gonna want to try to get that pickup tube out of that which means we're gonna to have to get the cherry picker out of here out here at some point see if we can pick the motor up enough to finish completely dropping that oil pan 
get that pickup tube out so we can take a look at that screen. But I figured you might want to see the lifters while we were at it. So this is passenger rear. I don't know if you can see that too well. You can see that play. You get a little bit of side to side play in it. You got a little bit of scoring starting to happen. This one's about the same, but there's some slop also in its needle bearings. You got some scoring here, but it's not too bad. That one's also not too bad. I'm trying to find it. Ah, there we go. That's what I wanted to see. Now, these are the MDF li MDS lifters, because you can see by the holes on the passenger rear. But at the keen eye, you pick those holes up. This lifter is turned in on itself. That pin should be out. In other words, this lifter is turned where that pin can no longer be pushed in and these lifters can't collapse. Now that one looks okay. It doesn't look like the pin's turned, but the pin has turned on that one. So that's passenger rear. So we're gonna go passenger front and that's just a piece of fuzz. That one's not too bad. It's not too loose. That one's not too bad. That one's not too bad. But look at this piece of work here. Look at that. Look at the play in that. Those needle bearings are gone. Plus that is destroyed right there. This, I would say, more than likely uh, is probably, uh, let's see here. So we got one, two, three, four. That would be one, two, three, four. That would be another cylinder. So, be driver hmm I don't know I would say judging by the damage on this probably lines up with the most chewed up lobe on that one but yeah it's gone that's the moral of that story you can also see that this one looks like it's just started to turn inside the bore where that pin doesn't line up and it looks like this one has also done the same thing you can no longer see a pin inside that window. You can see where that pin's out of position where it just started to turn. That one's completely turned and gone. Uh, if you look over here on, I think I have, hopefully I have these labeled right. I may have mixed these around, but no biggie. We're obviously not going to reuse them anyway. Driver rear, look at that. See the grooves into that? And look at the up down motion in that lifter. Those bearings are gone as well as well as I don't see a pin in either one of those. Now that may be normal, but don't quote me on that. But again, some of these you can clearly see that the pin's half, half in the spot and half not. But regardless, that lifter is gone. And coming around to driver's front, that one's okay. That one's okay. Well, actually no, look at that. See the slop starting to form in that one? That one's all right, that one's decent, and that one's decent. But you can see, you can see your pin, you can see you can see the pin just barely kind of in the corner of that circle. This one started to turn, and that one is also starting to turn out of position. So, shovel lifters failed due to needle bearings. More of the lifters are failed due to just again just as an example you can see that see that pin just on the very corner of that opening that should be in line with that hole and it's not so several of these lifters weren't able to collapse when commanded uh, by the system to do so so they would have been uh, you know stuck open stuck closed uh, not to mention that coincides the bearing failure on the lifter coincides with the you know obviously destroyed cam loads so that's the other issue again several destroyed lobes several destroyed the lifters and oh we're not done yet bring you in here to see the cylinder heads now this one is this one is passenger side. 
So this would be two, four, six, and eight. That, we'll have to test it, but that looks like a burnt up valve to me. Uh, the rest of these look kind of okay. They're just heavily carbon deposited. They may clean up. I'm thinking at this point, we're just gonna dump all new valves into these heads. The heads themselves look fine. Yeah, you've got the normal buildup of dirt and sludge, but I don't see any pitting. Uh, I'll put a straight edge on these later and just verify that they're, you know, straight across and not insanely warped. I'm not seeing any evidence where the head may have been cracked, you know, allowing uh, water to mix in, or to mix in with the antifreeze, anything of that nature. Um, we, now, to be fair, when we did drain the antifreeze, there was a little bit of oil in it, but not an excessive amount. So I'm thinking maybe that was more just uh, potentially sabotage than anything else. Now, let's go on the driver's side cylinder head, which we have here. It's a little bit different of a story. Got the pardon, pardon the camera work. Okay. Let's get this backed away from that cylinder head because I don't want to scratch that surface. Hold on a second. I got to put you down so I can get this into position. Okay. Got you back. Again, it looks like potentially maybe another burnt valve there and there. Uh, could just be dirt, but you can see the the discolorization how that one is much more lighter tan than its counterparts uh, That one looks like it's sealing. Okay a little bit of a gap there compared to the others again, we'll have to We'll have to get the valves out and and check them See what the seats look like underneath, but that's not the important piece. We want to see here. Look at this that is a stuck open intake valve so this would have been driver's side so it would have been cylinders one three five and seven so this would have been cylinder seven if you remember the one that had no compression the one's push rod that was out now the reason why that push rod wouldn't hold itself into position uh, was due to the fact that uh, this valve is bent so it wasn't being picked up all the way by the spring uh, plus that plus having lifter damage and potentially this is more than likely also the result of one of the lobes being damaged on the cam but either way that valve is shot as you can see there definitely one of the reasons why there would have been zero compression inside this cylinder now remember we did compression test all eight cylinders and we were getting compression on seven out of the eight so that tells me that these valves although they look kind of horrendous they were sealing but it may not be a bad idea just to go ahead and you know strip all these valves out uh put new valve lap put new valves in lap them uh, and then what we'll do is we'll turn them upside down like they are now and then we'll put some rubbing alcohol or something along that nature inside these boards with the spark plugs installed and as long as the liquid doesn't leak out then we we know we got a decent seal but at a minimum uh destroyed valve as well as at least one or more lifters on every pack of four is damaged and you saw it here let's see if we can count these up we've got at least nicks there so you got at least one damaged lobe two three four uh, let's see so at least one damaged lobe in that section of four uh, let's see this section of four do we have yep we got some pitting in this one not too bad but you got at least one lobe starting to damage itself in this section of four obviously that one is completely destroyed and what else do we have here and in this last section here do we have yep there we go that was the one we were looking at earlier you so see you can see the pitting starting to happen on that one so at least one or more damage lifters per section of four at least one damaged lobe per section of four on the cam yeah, this motor wasn't uh, 
but uh, definitely wasn't going to be doing a doing a damn thing pardon my French but that's for sure uh, so far this first cam bearing surface seems fine it, yeah you got some wear marks on it but that's pretty normal I can run my finger across this and not pick up any ridges it feels fingernail across this not pick up any ridges it feels pretty smooth and we'll have to get a bore scope down the rest of them to see how they look and then we'll evaluate from there we still need to clean the cylinders up we have we got all the water out of them and all the the crap that fell into them out i'm going to spray them down with a bunch of oil uh, just to protect everything so it doesn't start to rust on us and then we'll spin the uh, crank bolt a couple of times and kind of see how that feels. Uh, and then we'll make our determination if we're just going to rebuild the top end or just uh, allow this motor be turned into paper clips uh, and then do something else. But other than that, I'll bring you back. Thank you much. Bye. And welcome back. So just to catch you up on what we've done thus far, uh, we wiped all the debris out of the cylinder bores coated everything down thoroughly with oil uh, and spun the crank over a couple of times as we were doing it we we're wiping the garbage off the cylinder walls and spraying everything down with even more oil everything is smooth uh, as far as turning that crank we can still see the hash marks in the in all the cylinders there is no evidence that I can find of the pistons coming in contact with the valves so that one valve being bent, that number seven intake valve being bent, doesn't look like it was caused by the cylinder, by the piston slapping into the uh, intake valve. So at a minimum we know that we're going to need lifters and a cam. We know that we're going to need a couple of valves at least for our cylinder heads and of course all the accompanied gaskets that you would normally change out. Provided we can get this engine picked up um, high enough to get the oil pan off, uh, then we'll investigate getting a windage tray uh, slash oil pan gasket because they're, they're, they're one of the same. Chrysler calls it a, a windage tray. Um, but uh, I think that'll be it as far as this one. Like I said, uh, if the spin in the crank, everything is smooth as butter not feeling any excess play, not seeing any gouges in the cylinders. Uh, you may or may not be able to see it if I get you in close. Oh, hopefully you can. You might be able to see that. Hopefully you can, but you can actually see the hash marks that are still in the cylinder walls. Uh, and if this is the original engine in this truck, and this truck is clocking in at about 198,000 miles, if this is still the original motor, that's pretty darn impressive, uh, if you ask me. So there's a there's a quick lowdown of the parts that we're going to need thus far, uh, and then of course we'll have to get the valves out of these cylinder heads and just give a good looking at the valve seats, uh, and then we'll put a straight edge over it, make sure the cylinder heads are still rel relatively straight. I think they'll be fine. I don't see evidence that it overheated. In any way I think this was literally just the classic uh, unfortunately classic uh, Hemi uh, lifter valve or lifter failure multiple types of failure actually I might add in this group as well as when they failed then wiping out the lobes in the cam so that being said I will let you go and I'll I'll bring you back for the next one thank you much bye